and we're back. Howdy y'all, this is Ethan Monreal, back at it again, giving you that gay shit you love while playing some more Earthbound. So last time we were here, we collected the seventh and final melody of the Soundstone, and used it to connect our power with that of the Earth, unlocking the realm of Magicant that lies deep within our minds. On top of that, I talked about some gay shit, you know, um, I talked a little bit about being bullied by other gay people, and also talked about some of the stigma um, that other groups of people within the LGBT community face, in particular people with HIV. This time around, I don't really have anything planned. I have a lot of life updates. It's been two weeks since I recorded a video. My energies are just bubbling up. I'm bursting at the seams with gay. So I'm going to drop that all on y'all and also explore Magicant with you like I promised. So first things first, let's talk a little bit about Earthbound. We're in Magicant, like I said, uh, I went back to the beginning so that I could actually talk to the NPCs because I didn't do that last part. So let's go ahead and get into it. Ness, you've stood on the eight power spots of the Earth. From these, you created Magicant, the realm of your mind. In Magicant, there's beauty, kindness, sorrow, and hatred. Of course, there's an evil and violent side of you. The Sea of Eden sits at the center of those feelings. It takes you to the truth about yourself. So this is actually not a throwaway line. This is actually pretty important into the overall meta of Earthbound. So for one, um, if you don't remember, Gygus, the evil entity we're fighting against, can control the evil in people's minds. For Ness to truly be strong enough to actually fight Gygus, he needs to expunge that evil from himself. And that is the purpose of Magic Hand. This is a trial where we basically fight the evils in our own mind and expunge it from our bodies. That way, we can basically not have something Gygus can hold over us. And on top of that, it'll just help us grow as a person. But anyway, we got some more people to talk to. Ness, maybe you don't want to hear this, but you remind me of myself when I was younger. I can't do anything more for you. Good luck, Ness. And that's Everdread. So every time we talk to an NPC, the color changes. And these NPCs don't actually exist. These are either Ness's feelings towards um, things he's seen, or they're representations of himself in his own mind. So, this rabbit here, this is not a real rabbit. This is the realm of Magicant, which your mind created. Why don't you explore your mind? Take your time, Ness. So off screen, I actually went ahead and filled up my inventory with some just random shit that we're going to need to get through this, because while Magic Hand isn't necessarily a dungeon, it is a pretty rough segment of the game, which I say again every other part. Um, it is more of a trial. You are basically trying to journey to the center of your mind without basically your party members to help you out. So all of the healing you're going to get is going to come from you and all of the damage you do is going to come specifically from Ness. And so, as a consequence of that, we need to be able to fill up our psychic points very readily. So I have four magic puddings, which heal 60, um, 60 psychic points, and brain food lunch, which gives you 40 and heals you. And next thing's next, we have Pokey here. Ness, you're so lucky. I envy you. Dot dot dot. I have no luck. But Ness, well, okay. Let's be friends forever, alright? And so like I said, these are all representations of things in Ness's mind, and like I said last part, that implies Ness feels that Pokey is just kind of a loser. Um, and that's, that's the nicest way of putting it, because Pokey is definitely kind of a naughty child who um, is a little bit hard to sympathize with, but at the same time... Um, Ness believes that Pokey is just lonely and wants friends, which is why he acts out the way he does. But in this house are the Flying Men. The Flying Men are actually representations of Ness's courage, and they're pretty buff too. Um, I'm really glad this game did not come out more recently because there would probably be a lot of pornography of these dudes, which I would be a little bit uncomfortable with. They are pretty cut though, they got some, some pretty ballin' abs back there, and their backs are pretty muscularly. Uh, drawn to. But anyway, y'all are probably wondering uh, where the hell I've been. It's been two weeks since I last recorded a video, and I'm just here all of a sudden. Um, and the answer to that is that I've just had a lot of shit going on. Um, like I said a while ago, I did get a new job, and that job 
um, was involving me working for the county, so local government. However, I actually got fired from my job because I was not able to keep up with their productivity levels that they needed. And what I mean by that is I was basically hired to work on a special project um, that they needed done ASAP, and I just could not keep up with what they wanted me to do, and so they let me go. Um, and that made me very, very sad, because I was very underemployed at that job. Uh, like I've said a few times, I have a master's degree, and I was being paid $15 an hour, which is very, very little um, for the amount of student debt that I have. And, um, you know, I was not able to keep that job. I lost a job that I was underemployed for, and that made me feel pretty bad. Um, and on top of that, that week, I actually um, got into a really bad argument with my mom, and basically, I, she made me, like, really, really, really mad. Oh my gosh, she made me super mad. She was basically calling me lazy. Um, because after I had learned that I was being let go from my job, they said, you know, you can finish out your week or you can just stop coming because it's going to take us a bit to find someone new anyway. Um, well, they didn't say that last part about finding someone new, but I mean, that was implied to be the reason why. And at first I wasn't going to come back because they let me know Monday. Um, and then I was like, whatever, I'll just stay till Friday and make more money. But on Tuesday, I didn't go because I was feeling bad and I was still deciding. And I hadn't told my mom yet. And she was basically being like, you're lazy and you don't do anything. Um, and you can't just lay around here all day. And I was like, you're not even really trying to understand what's going on. And then also, um, I felt like I wouldn't be so upset by this if... I had more emotional support, um, because the reason why things bother me as bad as they do, um, exist, or not exist, um, they bother me the way they do in large part because, um, I basically had to, uh, be there mostly for myself, and, uh, that eventually led me to telling her that I was sexually assaulted when I was younger, and that... Um, I told her that the reason why I am the way I am, and basically that I'm such a triggly puff <laughs> that has trouble dealing with things, um, is that, you know, I couldn't really rely on her for emotional support because she just um, responded with aggression towards me when I was younger because she was homophobic. So, like, I guess a neater way of explaining that is that, you know, I was sexually assaulted when I was younger, and... I had to deal with that all by myself, basically, because I couldn't really tell my mom because she was homophobic and she didn't really respect me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, why would I tell someone who is homophobic, who is, like, making fun of me um, in my own house, like, why would I rely on them for emotional support? Um, and she just didn't understand that, because she was like, I've done all these things for you, blah da blah da blah da, and it's like, you know, you're not expecting, you're expecting too much of me, basically, to just be okay with it. Um, and that just really frustrated me, because it ended up making it about her, um, in my opinion, in that case. Like, she basically turned it and was like, I'm ungrateful, and, you know, I did the best I could. Um, and you should really just accept that I was homophobic and that you seem to not realize that you were the, basically that I was at fault for being different and that you shouldn't expect me just to be accepting of you, which was like really just the whole point of the argument is that, um, she doesn't really try to understand me in a lot of cases. She just kind of does things. Um, and then when I act ways that she doesn't like, or that she doesn't understand, she just tends to be aggressive towards me. Which is, um, that's just her way of, um, dealing with things. It's because she just doesn't, I think she just legitimately does not know how to deal with that kind of thing. Like, she just doesn't know how to deal with people in that way. So, like, 
I guess a good way of explaining it is that, you know, that morning when I was feeling bad, it was not in, like, she didn't have the presence of mind to be like, okay, like, clearly you're feeling bad, let me try to help you. It was more like, okay, you're not doing what you're supposed to do, let me punish you, basically. And that, you know, that's the whole attitude that is what alienated me from her in the first place, is because I didn't want to really interact with that. Like, why would I rely on someone for emotional support when you don't really try to understand me? And I think a lot of it is that um, she and a lot of people's parents feel that um, children are personal property and that she basically, like, you know, if I take care of you, I can basically treat you however I want, which is very frustrating um, to interact with. And again, the reason why I never told her anything about that. But it also shows um, how upset I was that morning, considering I just had silently admitted to myself I will never talk to my mom about stuff like that. But it was also an inevi inevitability, because I was trying to be closer to my mom, and I have been trying to be closer to my mom. Um, because ultimately, you know, it, it nags at my soul a lot that we are not close, because I love my mom a lot. Okay, and so, did I equip the magic hand bat? I did, there we go. And so, here I am, um, and we've, I've been in the process of, I don't want to call it making up, because um, one of the things that was frustrating me was that basically she was acting like I'm unwieldy and unmanageable. When in reality, like, what I asked for her was very basic, is just don't be homophobic and, like, try to understand me. But the, in her mind, that seemed like it was too much. Like, that was completely unreasonable. Um, because she, she had pointed out that she has asked me in the past if, like, something was wrong. And I just never told her, even when she asked. And, again, the reason was fundamentally, like, you are homophobic and I cannot trust you that way to like really talk about intimate stuff in my life that involves my sexuality and so it's like that's I think that's unreasonable of you to even really assume of me like why would I talk to someone like one of my things was like why would I talk about what happened um when I was younger with you if when you were when I was younger you were basically telling me that you basically asked when I came out if someone raped me and made me gay and I was like why would I interact with someone or like talk about an actual sexual assault if you believe like such really like really fundamentally dumb things really I'm um, just very very dumb and mean things because she's smart enough to know that that's not a thing she just is like that sometimes um, and, you know, that was basically that on that, um, but I'm, I'm working on it because I think one of the things that differentiates me and my mom, and this is something I've noticed when I was much younger, um, is that I really try not to give up on people, um, like, it really takes a lot, like, the reason why... I still interact with my mom is because I do believe that we can come to a better conclusion but like at the same time that involves me stating my boundaries and my boundary is basically like you need to respect me basically you need to not treat me like I'm property or you need to like actually try to understand me instead of relying on punishment to get me to do what you want but um, this really has been a journey to the center of my mind because we are here at our destination. We are in the Sea of Eden, which is the final area of Magicant, which this was pretty quick, right? This is this video is moving pretty pretty smoothly. But we're gonna go ahead and examine this statue. I'm the evil part of your brain. You can't beat me because you are the one who forced me into being. And much like um, Ness is doing and expunging this evil, I have to really, um, you know, deal with my anger that I have towards my mom. I don't want to say, 
I don't need to expunge it, but I need to I need to work through those feelings and not really let them control me, if that makes sense. Perfect. Um, because as long as I'm holding on to that anger, I can't really come to a, a peaceful conclusion <laughs> with her, basically. Like, I can't do the work of trying to forgive my mom while I'm still hanging on to that anger, if that makes sense. And I think that's just generally good advice if you're struggling with things with, like, your fram your family or your friends. I almost said family. Is that, you know, if you really are, like, hanging on to intense anger against someone and you're trying to, like, get better with them, I guess, like that, it just, those things are so diametrically opposed that it's going to create conflict. And part of the reason why we had that argument in the morning was because, like, I was simultaneously trying to be close to my mom, but also, like, holding a lot of anger. And one of the things that bothered her, I need to heal... Um, one of the things that bothered her was that she said I looked at her with a lot of hatred in my eyes, which was true. Like, I was very, very upset, um, because it's like, you know, if I wasn't, yeah, you know, if when I was a kid, if I had been able to come home and just really been accepted after being bullied all day at school, um, I think that I would be a very different person and that I wouldn't have a lot of the problems I have, you know, and that um, it's very reasonable for a child to want their parent not to basically, you know, be mean to them for being gay. <laughs> but uh, I'm working through that because ultimately, you know, it's one of those things where it is partially my mom's fault, but it's not the entirety of her fault, and it's also, you know, I could have done some things differently, and that she, I mean, there are a lot of things in society that make people homophobic, and something I try to think on, and I've meditated on in the past, is that, you know, if I was straight, I'd probably be homophobic too, just because there's so much in society that promotes it in other people, you know what I mean? Like, Gay people are the butt of people's jokes, and they're treated as being gross and nasty and whatever, and it's really hard to ignore those messages, even if you're gay, let alone if you're straight. Um, but I, you know, I want, I want to be at peace with my mom eventually, but it will take work, and it, it really requires me, in part, to stand my ground and be like, you need to respect me. Because um, what I really don't want this to be is my mom you know, internalizing this is me being really ungrateful and me being really sensitive because she thinks that she feels like I'm a really sensitive person. But what she doesn't realize is that I'm actually just really sensitive towards her specifically. Like, it, it's her and my dad. Like, otherwise, I feel like I'm actually a pretty confident person um, despite having really bad social anxiety. But in the meantime, now that I've addressed this, Ness must address the voice in his head. Ness heard a familiar voice at the center of the Sea of Eden. Gygus's goal is to destroy you. Listen carefully. Everything in the universe could be destroyed at the hands of Gygus. But he and his followers are also in trouble. The Apple of Enlightenment has foretold that Gygus's attempt will fail. It is because of the existence of a boy named Ness. That's me! Listen. Free your mind and know what you must do. Your destiny has already been decided. You, I, where should we go? You know deep within your, sorry, you know deep within the reaches of your mind. S S S Saturn, Saturn Valley, yes, go to the valley where the Mr. Saturn live. You'll get something new there. Soon Magic Ant will be no more. We must be quick. Ness really heard his own voice. Go to Saturn Valley. Go to Saturn Valley now. And the game is pretty heavy-handed at this point. You know, it wants you to go somewhere. Um, but part of this is because it is prepping us for the final segment of the game. And what this involves is a massive power up on Ness's part. Ness was filled with the power of Giant Step. Ness's speed increased by five. I'm not going to read all of these. But basically, we are going to be leveling up like crazy. 
and getting massive stat increases because again we are probably in the final hour of the game in terms of like if you were just legit playing this I would say it could even be shorter if you just have good RNG but we are just massively increasing in power and Ness is basically going to be a one-man army at this point in the game and at that moment Ness's psychic power is radically expanded Ness gained 200,000 EXP Nessus level is 81, and there we go. Now, if we were lower level, we would have leveled up like 10 times. However, we are getting pretty close to the, the level cap here. We only have about, well, actually it's about 19 levels, but... The sound zone? Oh, shit, mom. Man, I was trying to... I was trying to make this a little bit somber, but it didn't work out that way, because... Oh my god, a little bit of a speech impediment. The sound stone that Ness used to have is now gone. Exclamation points. Oh shit, he's up, boy. What happened, Ness? You've been unconscious for a long time. You kept saying something. Saturn Valley? What's waiting for us there? Anyway, we need to teleport. And so we are all grouped up. And for reference, let's look at Ness's level compared to his... Fr oh shit, I guess the game just hijacked us. I forgot that you actually don't get to control yourself there. So, let's look at Ness's level. He is 81, and everyone else is in there their 70s and high 60s um, but again if you are not level grinding like I was before the level difference is going to be a lot more pronounced and it's not uncommon for Ness to be like a full ass 15 or 20 levels higher than everyone else if you're doing a lower level run because of all that EXP you get However, um, lucky for us, um, the fact that we are overleveled will make the end of this a lot easier because, again, it's pretty brutal. And we have two more segments of the game. Um, we are going to need to return to a previous area to go on a short mission, mission. And then we are also going to need to go to the prequel to the final area, which leads directly into the final area. But in the meantime, uh, this video is about to hit 25 minutes, so I am going to cut it here. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, and you know what's nagging at the back of my head? I said I had a speech impediment, but that's not actually true. I just have a reading um, disability because I have a learning disability because I have dyslexia. Because um, I, I could already see in someone's mind um, the call-out post and me getting called out for appropriating... Um, and other people's disability but anyway I got dyslexia I can't read nothing and that's cool because sometimes that makes my mouth say weird things because I'm seeing letters where they don't exist but in the meantime in between time I'm Ethan Bonreal these things are a little bit freaky looking and I'm out this piece I hope you enjoyed the video